Hey guys, it's Vera from Rudy Visuals and in today's video I want to show you how I edit portraits. So a few of you have commented on our videos asking me how I edit my photos and so I'm going to show you from start to finish how I do it. So to edit photos, I use a Wacom tablet. I will link it down in the description below. And I'm editing my photos on a Dell XPS 15. The, the Wacom tablet is very useful because it's basically like a giant touchpad and you can have a pen that goes on it. You can also use it. It's also a touch so you can use your fingers, but this is a lot more accurate. So it's basically very useful in Photoshop when you have to do very delicate things so that everything is very precise. So to edit the photo today, I'm going to be using a mixture of Lightroom and Photoshop. This is a photo that we'll be editing today. It's a photo of Laura. She's a model from Poland. I'll put her in the description below if you want to check her out. And the first thing we're going to do is we are in Lightroom. So we're going to go to Develop. In the Develop module of Lightroom, we are going to select our color profile. Uh, I like to use the Adobe Portrait. I already shoot with my camera in a flat profile so the photos are already pretty good to edit. Next we are going to scroll down and enable profile corrections which basically gets rid of the editing and the distortion. Sometimes you may not want to do that if you think that the editing and distortion adds character to your photo and in this case I think it looks better if we leave it off. You can also remove chromatic aberrations, but this photo was taken in that sunset in low light, so there aren't that many here. So we can leave that off. Next thing we're gonna do is straighten out the photo. It is a little bit crooked. So we're just going to give it a bit more of a symmetry. And I think that looks a lot better. Alright, I like to have the eyes and the on the third. Alright, the next. This photo is pretty much ready to be opened in Photoshop. So we're going to go there now. So here is our photo in Photoshop. And we are going to start with by making a new layer. You don't have to do this, but it's very useful to see like before and after. So the first thing we're going to do is press J on the keyboard. And we're going to activate the healing tool. And what I'm basically going to do is zoom in and clean up any imperfections, anything that I don't like, anything like stray hairs and things like that. And this photo doesn't really have that many stray hairs because I like to make sure to get rid of it before I take the photo since I hate, uh, like editing, it. I hate editing them out. So I'm basically just going to go around, clean up any like random dirt from the hair and any random patches that you can see. So I'm basically just going to fast forward this section because it's going to take me quite a long time. So I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> Here is our clean photo. You can see the before and after. It's not much of a difference, but it does help with the overall look of your photo. So next up, I would usually use frequency separation. However, Laura's skin is already pretty even and I don't think it needs any blurring and generally looks fine to me. So we're going to Go ahead and start with the next step, which is toning. And I'm basically going to create a mask, which is going to be a slightly dark exposure. And we're going to invert it. And then we're going to create another mask, which is a slightly lighter exposure. And we're also going to invert it. So this technique is called dodge and burn. And we're going to use it to tone down some of the darker areas and bring out the lighter ones just to add more contrast to our photo. With a brush tool, make sure this is set to white. We're going to zoom into Laura's face. And with the lighter exposure, we're going to bring out the blue in the eyes. And I'm basically changing the size of the brush with the Wacom tablet. It has like a little circle on it that allows you to adjust it. And we're going to set the opacity of the brush to around 20. So we're just going to work around the frame of the eye and highlight some of the areas around it, particularly the blue and the pupil. 
and any highlights that you can see that are a bit dull. And we're going to use the darker exposure just to darken the crease and the eyelashes as well as the inside of the eye and around the room. You can also use it to darken slightly the eyebrows just to make them stand out a bit more. And we're going to repeat the same thing on the other eye. Make sure that you remember what you did to the first eye so that you can repeat it perfectly on the second one so they do look like they're matching. Alright, so here's the before and after. It's just a slight difference, but you can see the eyes a bit more and the eyes are probably the most important part of the image. So now when we zoom out, we can work around the face. So I'm going to set the opacity a bit lower so that it's not as harsh. And with a slightly bigger brush, we're going to go around the outskirts of Laura's body. Just to add a bit more shape to it. You can also do it around the jawline and a bit more around the face just to make it look a little, a little bit slimmer and then we're going to slowly start highlighting some of the body parts so we're going to highlight the color bones and the cheekbones and just generally some of the lighter areas and with the arms we're just going to take the lighter exposure and go along them to add a bit more shape to them and with the darker exposure go once more around them but going slightly more in onto the right arm and the hands as well so you can also zoom in and you can add a bit more depth to the lips by choosing the light exposure and with a small brush going just gently on the bow of the lips and with the dark exposure use it to darken the line in between so with the light exposure we're also going to bring up the opacity a little bit and highlights more of the swimming costume because it is quite sparkly and i like the texture of it so we want to bring that out next we're going to work on the hair and highlight any of the brighter strands So here's the before and after, you can see that it made quite a big difference and you can see that the more important parts of the image stand out more like Laura's face. So next time we're going to add a few more adjustment layers to the picture. We're going to add some contrast to the swimming costume and some of the other areas. So I like to go a bit overboard and then set the opacity down. So with a hard brush we're just going to go around and just pick out the swimming costume and increase the contrast on it. So this is the mask that adds contrast to the swimming costume. You can see the before and after and I'm just going to make another one because I like this one at 100%. And we're going to add some more contrast to other parts of the image. So with the brush at the opacity around 20 and make sure it's a soft brush, we're going to go around the face and just add some more contrast into the image, particularly into the hair. The hair usually looks really good with some more contrast in it. Laura has a lot of tattoos so we can go over them too. It just brings it out nicely and this fabric on the floor also would look quite nice if we added a bit more contrast into it. And then we can also make another layer and add a bit more saturation to the image. So 
we're going to zoom in and add some saturations to the worst cheeks. Make sure to do a soft brush. We can also go around the eyes, make the eyeshadow come out a bit more and the color of the eyes. We can go over the lips. Anywhere where you think there should be more color. I think because her body is in shadow, we can also go around it and just make it look a bit more vibrant. So this is everything that I usually do in Photoshop. I'm going to group everything together so I can show you before and after. Now you can see all the changes that I have made to the image and it looks a lot more contrasty, you can see her face stands out a bit more, the swimming costume looks a lot better. So now I'm going to save it and go back to Lightroom. So now we are back in Lightroom and you can see that we have basically created another copy of the image and I have a very similar photo here that I have edited before and I'm just going to copy all the settings from it so I can give you a walk through it. So here is our final photo and what I've done to it is change the color calibration a little bit just to accentuate the delicate pinks and purples which I really like in this photo. I've also added a vignette to make the photo stand out a bit more. Next I've added a little bit of orange into the highlights and a bit of purple dark blue color into the shadows. And I've also changed the hue saturation and luminance just to correct some of the color calibration. And here in the basic panel I've just done some corrective touches. I changed the white balance, brought the exposure up a little bit, I've crushed the blacks and added a bit of a haze, lowered the vibrance and up the saturation. This is our final image and here is the before. You can see that I've done quite a lot to it and it looks a lot better now. You can see Laura a bit more and it just has a nice ethereal look to it. So this is pretty much how I edited my portraits from start to finish. I know this video was pretty tech heavy and if you'd like some more in-depth tutorials let me know in the comments below. And also if you like this type of videos I can make more about like animal portraits or full photos. Just let me know if you'd like to see something like that. I know that a lot of our viewers are new to photography so I'll be making a lot more beginner friendly tutorials to help you get started with Lightroom and Photoshop and show you the basics of photo editing. So I'm gonna end it here guys, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. We also added some new photos to our website and you can check out rudyvisuals.com. Alright guys, that's it, thank you so much, bye bye!